Hey everyone, it's Leon. Now it's only July, but it's already clear it's gonna be a hot network summer, which obviously is not great if you're actually in charge of running that network. <laughs> Of course, if your network has the fever, the only prescription is... No, not more cowbell! Monitoring! It's monitoring and observability! Anyway, now in this episode of What's New at Kentic, we're gonna take a quick look at some improvements to the search bar. We're gonna dive into a recent Megatrends report. We'll talk about Kentic Close-Up, which is another amazing Kentic video series. And in our new to you segment, we're gonna look at how to get data into Kentic using the API. Did you remember to hydrate? Let's get started. It's no exaggeration that the internet probably wouldn't exist without search. From Archie, Veronica, and Jughead, to Excite, Lycos, Yahoo, Alta Vista, Ask Jeeves, Cha Cha, Duck Duck Go, Beidou. I know I'm forgetting one of them. Anyway, without all of those, the internet wouldn't be nearly as usable, let alone popular as it is today. So it should come as no surprise that here at Kentic, we decided that our search function needed a bit of sprucing up. So what exactly is new? Well, first, the search bar is now accessible and visible from anywhere on the platform. We've also updated the keyboard shortcut to get into the search bar. It's now control slash, which matches industry standards. Yes, yes, it's command slash for you Mac users. Second, we've added the idea of favorites, and you can favorite just about anything on the platform. For example, you can favorite any dynamic quick view page, like an ASN instance or a device. Any top talkers page. Any settings page. So you can get back to the settings you use often, like the network devices page or notifications or interfaces. We've also added quick options for both favorites and recents when you open the search window. And we've added a feature to auto-populate the results as you type so that you can get to the thing that you're looking for faster. Now with this update, we've laid the groundwork for the future. Everything from executing actions like creating a new test or alert right from the search bar to incorporating conversational AI because apparently AI is the magic fairy dust of IT right now and just like my granddaughter's glitter art, it's gonna get into every crack and crevice of our life. In any case, you can check it out now by heading over to portal.kentic.com and hitting control slash. Okay, fine, command slash. EMA is an IT analyst research firm that specializes in providing insights and analysis about not only the current trends and fads in tech, but also how things are actually being used and what the boots on the ground IT folks think about the tech that matters. Now recently, they published the Network Management Megatrends, which honestly, I was shocked to find out wasn't a new Mighty Morphin Power Ranger character. It's actually a report that they put out since 2008 on the way that IT folks monitor, manage, and troubleshoot their networks. Now, if keeping networks happy and healthy is your jam, and more importantly, explaining to your boss why having a happy, healthy network is kind of important, this report has definitely got some solid information to help. For example, from 2016 to 2022, the rating of how successful network operators thought that their operations had been had dropped from 49% to 27%. But good news, in 2024, that rating rebounded back to 42%. Now, I've said it before, alerts don't suck. Your alerts suck. And now I have data to prove it. In the last four years, the percentage of alerts that indicate a real problem has dropped from 42 to 28%. And in news that shouldn't surprise anyone who has actually been on a network team or sat anywhere near them during the lunch break, nearly 30% of network-related problems are related to somebody mistyping something in a configuration file. But the one tidbit that was interesting to us here at Kentic showed that over 70% of the IT folks surveyed thought that they were likely to replace their network management tool in the next two years. With 52 pages of EMA report goodness, there's a lot more insights to be gained. If you want to check it out for yourself, you can grab a free copy by using a link in the description below. Hey everyone, welcome to the first ever exciting episode of Kentic Close-Up, where we zoom in on the latest Kentic features, products, or capabilities. In each episode, our team brings you a focused interview of just one aspect of the suite of Kentic's network observability solutions. So that was the intro to Kentic's newest ongoing video series, Kentic Close-Up. 
So you might be wondering how Close Up is different from this series. Well, aside from everything I just described in the intro you just listened to, it's also a much deeper dive into the various technologies we're discussing, and it's also much more focused. It's also not a series that has any particular cadence whatsoever. It's not meant to be weekly or monthly or whatever. New episodes will come out when there's new things to explore, which, given the pace that new stuff comes out around here, is going to be a lot for the foreseeable future. So I suggest you hit the play link link that you're going to find in the description below and make sure you hit subscribe and prepare to learn even more about Kentic features, tools, and improvements. I've discussed the Kentic API before on What's New at Kentic, but there's certainly more to it than a single new to you segment can describe. Like any other robust API, ours lets you query and even update data within the system. But the key question is, how? Recently, my colleague Justin Ryburn blogged about answering that exact question using Telegraph. His goal was to grab the network data coming from one of his wireless access points and push it into Kentic. Now, I'm not going to dissect the entire process, that's what the blog is for, and it's linked in the description below. But the best part is the blog also has an embedded video where Justin walks through the entire process step by step so you can see it. If you're a hands-on kind of person, Justin's blog is a great place to get started learning how to use the Kentic API for more than just queries. Is that capability new? Not really, but it might be new to you, and that's cool too. I think that's a good place to stop for this episode. Here at Kentic, we know there is a lot of bingeable content out there, so we appreciate you spending some of your precious viewing time with us instead. If you loved today's episode, remember to click like and subscribe for notifications on future episodes. And if you hated today's episode, remember to hit like and subscribe so you can watch us improve. For What's New at Kentic, I'm Leon Adato.